Okay, well, it's day nine. I have been here for nine days now. I'm enjoying my experience as much as I can. Uh, we've had another ceremony last night, and this time uh, I had the Ajo Sacha plant uh, as part of that experience. And the interesting thing about it is it created a lot of heat in my ceremony. I was doing a lot of sweating. There was an earlier part of it where I felt like my body was on fire. Uh, so definitely, definitely change, uh, definitely an effect from, from the master plant that I'm taking. Uh, also, interestingly enough, I didn't have any wandering thoughts. This was the first ceremony I've had where I didn't have conversations with myself or create imaginary scenes in my mind as just a way to fill the gaps. Uh, sometimes the mind tends to wander and we start thinking about anything from shopping lists to a difficult conversation we need to have with someone and uh, it tends to distract us from the experience so last night was a fairly clear and focused experience for me uh, another interesting thing is when Tailenda came up to sing to me and I sat up to sing um, I, I felt this resonance then uh, there was a helper that came up with a shakapa and started shaking a shakapa around me and everything just kind of lit up. My, my mind lit up. I saw these, felt this bright lights everywhere. Uh, a lot of energy just in terms of physical posture. I was able to sit up. Um, I, I, I felt like I could reach in and, and access a big part of my voice, which was pretty exciting. Because normally in, on medicine, ayahuasca just flattens me out. It's, it's such a draining medicine for me. I tend to spend most of it. Uh, most of the journey on my back or flopped down on my stomach. But this time I was sitting, I was alert, I was attentive, I was engaged. Uh, the song was resonating, it was flowing, it was beautiful. And uh, the maestra, when she moved on to sing for the next person, uh, all the energy just kind of fizzled out and I just flopped back down like, the, like a dead fish. <clears throat> so it's definitely, definitely an effect. Uh, and speaking of maestros, I, I also wanted to say that uh, there's kind of a gap between the old school curanderos and the curanderos and the, the new age of uh, modern shamanism. And what's, what's going on right now is before the Joe Rogans and the celebrity endorsements, the ayahuasca was not kind of a global phenomenon. Uh, ayahuasca was kind of native to the jungle and a lot of the old-school curanderas and curanderos who practiced it for decades and really really got deep and, and had spiritual connections with many plants they were dying off and there wasn't a lot of new blood to kind of step up and take over so they're getting more and more rare and and uh, almost to the point where like they're considered almost like a national treasure now and then there's uh, this whole new movement of plant medicine that's being adopted and picked up and promoted all over the Western world. And what that, that's done is that's created a, a huge demand, and where there is a demand, the supply will always be found. So now we have a lot of these self-proclaimed shamans who are, who are new to the, to the profession because it hasn't been you know, going that long and they're cashing in on the popularity and they're creating these experiences for western tourists but they're not they're not authentic experiences in the sense that they will pour and they will sing and they will wear the clothes and they will look the part but they don't really know how to go that deep they don't have the years and years of training they don't have the years and years of sitting with medicine so for them going deep is is not really something that they're used to and it might even be a little scary and that's that's the big difference between the kind of the generations the old school uh, curanderas were 40 or 50 years of practice they've drank thousands and thousands and thousands of ceremonies they've healed you know thousands of people they go deep they go into the darkness they're not afraid right they 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 know what they're doing and there's a definitely a, a sense of power and purpose and calmness and confidence in the voice of someone like Tail Linda, who is 100% prepared, prepared to deal with anything that comes up because she's probably seen it many times before. And so there's that aura of calm, powerful, reassuring energy around her that just feels incredible especially when you're going into a place that's dark where you feel vulnerable where you feel scared 
um, her, her presence really does create an impact on the medicine so for me I would say she's definitely a lot different than the Iowa Scarrows I've sat with in the past uh, and I would say it would be worthwhile to come and experience her while she is still serving because it is it is a real treat uh, to sit in a circle with her and to feel how she projects and sings and just carries herself and carries the space. So at some point I would like to organize a small group to come down here, maybe for a dieta and uh, just kind of get a taste of what real medicine uh, is like. So yeah, we'll see what happens tonight. I have one more ceremony coming up. I'm almost looking forward to it.